63. What'd you say, Emily? Oh, I'm, I'm kind of joking. I said 45 um, through the end. 45 through the end. <laughs> 45 and on, please. Yeah. Great. 45? Yeah. Okay. Let's do 45 first just because I'm assuming it's easier than 63. So 45 f of x equals x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4 over x squared. Find the derivative. Okay. What you absolutely cannot do, and what we will address today, is it, you can't take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom and then like put them back together. Like that would be awesome if it worked. Like if, because that would be so easy. The top would be 3x squared minus 6x, and the bottom would be 2x, and you'd be done. But it doesn't work that way. You can't take derivative of the top, derivative of the bottom, and then divide them. So we've got to divide first, and if dividing by x squared is a problem, then maybe divide them. <clears throat> like individually by x squared. And again, here's where it's important to label because in a moment we're going to switch to f prime. So if you don't have anything labeled, then I don't know when you made the switch. And if you're trying to check your work later, you're, it's going to look funny. Uh, so we're still we're still in f. We haven't taken a derivative yet. We're just cleaning up some algebra here. 4 over x squared is fine, except I really can't take a derivative when it's like that. So I'm going to write it as 4x to the negative 2. Now I can take a derivative. All right, so just f of x equals x. What's the derivative of that? Of that piece. Well, think about y equals x. The slope is 1. Or you do the bring the 1 down, x to the 0 is 1. What about the derivative of 3? That one disappears, yeah. And again, you don't have to put the minus 0, but that might help you see that this one became 1, the 3 goes away, and then... The last one's kind of a straightforward power rule. Bring the negative 2 down, decrease the power by 1. And that would be a safe stop. Like, as kind of weird as that looks, that would be fine. Uh, on a multiple choice test, they would probably make it look like that. And if they were really tricky on a multiple choice test, they could get a common denominator and do x cubed minus 8 over x cubed, right, to get a common denominator. So there's your safe stop if you have a choice. There's sort of your preferred multiple choice answer. And there's your multiple choice answer with common denominator, which we'll do sometimes. And so that one gets a little tricky because if you get to here and then you start looking for answer choices, right? Because you don't, you don't know exactly which answer is going to match up. So you get to there, you start looking for answer choices. And if you see this, you're like, okay, that matches up. I can see that that's true. If you see this, I think it's a lot more difficult to say that these two are the same thing unless you do that middle step. Connor? Would they specify the look of our common denominator? No, they wouldn't. They wouldn't. You would have to know once you got here and you didn't see this answer, hopefully you could see, oh, wait a minute, I, they did something here to make it get from here to here. Andrew, was that your question as well? I mean, if you divide them both by x to the third, then you're then you're right back to here. If you get a common denominator, you're there. So they're the, they're the same answer. You just need to be able to recognize that they're the same answer. So on a multiple choice test, 
you don't stop here, and then you're unable to lo to identify that that's the same thing as what you got. Which is why we give partial credit on multiple choice. Because if I see your work and you get here, and then you can't do the algebra step to get to here, I will give you partial credit on a multiple choice test. Again, if all you do, if I don't see anything and you just mark C and it's wrong, then I'm not going to give you partial credit. But if I see some work shown, then you get partial credit even for the multiple choice part of the test. You'll probably get it right. Um, I reserve the right to, to take off points for not showing your work, but usually I'm trying to grade them so fast that if I see that you mark C and C is correct, I'm moving on. Unless... And on a lot of multiple choice ones, especially like concept questions, there's not work to show anyway. So I wouldn't take off for, for that. But if it was a harder problem and you didn't show any work and you guessed the right answer, I might take off if I slow down to catch it. Emily, was a question? Yeah. Um, on 114, uh -huh. numbers 19 through 23, just one of those, the, the one of the ones with the cosines. Sines and cosines in them? Um, about 19 since that's got sine and cosine in it. Y equals pi over 2 sine theta minus cosine theta. So Y prime. Pi over 2, any constant is just going along for the ride. So pi over 2 stays there. The derivative of sine is cosine. And these two you just have to know. Derivative of sine is cosine. And the derivative of cosine, you remember what it, what it is? Negative sine. Negative sine. So you got to be careful with those. Sine goes to cosine. Cosine goes to negative sine. And again, that's a the fine answer to stop. Pi over 2 cosine theta plus sine theta. Six, yeah. Which one? 63? 63. Oh, solve for K stuff. That's good. That's We like throwing those on the test. I guess I should read the directions here. Find k such that the line is tangent to the graph of the function. So this is the function. This is the tangent line. Hmm. So if I take the derivative of this function, K is a constant, so that's going to go away. Minus 2x. What does the derivative of a function tell me about the function? Slope of the yep, slope of the tangent line. F prime tells me slope of a tangent line. Oh, now I know why they gave me this tangent line. What's the slope of the tangent line? Negative 6. So the derivative is negative 2x. The slope of the tangent line is negative 6. So x equals 3. Except that that's not what the problem asked. All right, the problem says, what's k? You're like, well, I don't know what k is. I know what x is. So let's um, what could we what could we do with x equals three? Where do you want to plug it in? To the original function, okay. So f of three equals k minus nine. I, I like that. We're not done yet. 
I don't want to set it equal to zero. zero. If I set the derivative equal to zero, that's where I'm looking for a horizontal tangent line. So we do that, but that's not this problem. In fact, we need to do one of those before we're done. So this is the y value that I get from the function. But the y value of the function needs to equal the y value of the tangent line. Let's see if I can draw some reasonable picture of what's going on here. So there's the function. I know it's an upside down parabola. The tangent line has a slope of negative 6, somewhere like that. So we already figured out that at x equals 3 is where that happens. Now I need to know, well, I don't need to know the y value. But the y value of the function has got to equal the y value of the tangent line. So there's the function. Here's the tangent line. y equals negative 6 times 3 plus 1. So that would be negative 17. This is a good problem. OK, so what? So the y value of the tangent line is negative 17. The y value of the function is k minus 9. But these y values are supposed to be equal to each other. They're supposed to, to match right there. So k minus 9 is supposed to equal negative 17. So k equals negative 8. Let's see that on the on a picture. So negative 8 minus x squared if I can find a good okay so there's my graph my tangent line is Basically, I'm using my calculator to verify that this makes sense. My tangent line is negative 6x plus 1. And I would say that looks like there's the intersect at x equals 3 and at y equals negative 17 down there, and the slope is negative 6. So I, I think my picture helps me make sense of my answer there. What else from page 114? Let's do one of those horizontal tangent line problems. So 57, 59, 61. Oh, I know what I'm picking. 61. Why am I picking 61? Because it has a trig function in there. So y equals x plus sine x. Um, and we only want to look between 0 and pi over 2. So that's kind of nice. I don't have to worry about spinning around the unit circle a bunch of times. Determine the points, if any, at which the graph of the function has a horizontal tangent line. Horizontal tangent line. Uh, that's right. That means the slope is 0. And if the slope is 0, that means the derivative is 0. So horizontal tangent line is, is our fancy way of asking for where is the derivative equal to 0. So derivative of x is 1. Derivative of sine is cosine. And I want to know where that's equal to 0. So cosine of x equals negative 1. Let's see. Cosine is the x value. So the cosine is negative 1 over there at pi. So that means at pi, this thing has a horizontal tangent line. And again, 
this is this would be on the no calculator part of the test but while we're just playing trying to figure this stuff out let's see if that makes sense oops not a good window to look at second calc this is pretty cool. Your calculator will find a derivative at a certain point. And we think at pi, we think the derivative is 0. Let's see if that's the case. Yeah, that looks like a flat spot in the graph. That looks like the tangent line there um, would be 0. Would be hor or the slope would be 0. So using our calculator to kind of check our answers. How do you do, how do I do what I just did in the calculator? So put in the function I want to find the derivative for, go to graph, and then second calc has all of the fun stuff in it. So you can find a value, you can find a zero, you can find a min or a max, find an intersection, but then dy dx, ooh, I don't know if we've used that before, dy dx is the same thing as y prime. So dy dx, change in y over change in x, rise over run, slope kind of thing, that's a derivative. So find the derivative, and then you need to put in whatever x value you're concerned about. We said at pi. Oh, is that 0? 1.6 times 10 to the negative 7? Pretty much. 0. 0.00000167. Yeah, that's 0. All right, good questions.